Welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, we're going to learn how to turn someone into a caricature and then cartoon them. So the first thing we're going to do is duplicate our background layer. So click on it and then go Control J. On that copy layer, we're going to make a selection of our subject to be able to separate it from the background or cut it out. But for this video, I'm going to assume that you already know how to cut things out in Photoshop. If you don't, look up videos on how to select and mask. There's plenty of them out there and I'll have one linked in the description below. All right, now that you have your selection ready to go, we're going to make a copy of it by going Control J and then just hide the original one below by clicking the little eyeball. And then on our new copy layer, we're going to right click and go up to Convert to Smart Object. And we're going to use that Smart Object to make a caricature out of our person. So head up to Filter and go to Liquify. In Liquify, we're going to do a couple simple things here. We're going to go just to make sure you're selected on right here, this the face tool. And we're going to go over to eye size and just crank that one up and then crank this one up. And then for eye height, do the same thing, left and right, eye width, same thing, eye distance. My suggestion is to separate your eyes a little bit. You can see them moving apart. You don't want them cross-eyed, so separate them a little bit. And then the other two things here we don't really need to worry about. If you have something that you do want to change for your mouth or your nose, just go in here and slide them around. So you could, if you had a smile, let's say, you could enhance the, the smile a little bit and maybe the mouth width, whatever you're going to do, um, you can mess with it there. I might even just close this in a bit. And then the other one that I'm going to mess with is face shape. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to bump the forehead up a little bit to make the hair kind of rise up and I am going to move the jawline to the left to narrow it down and then even the face width I'm just gonna just do a touch. Okay so once you've messed with that just click OK and you can see the change happen automatically. Then my suggestion is to go right back in and do it again but you don't have to do all of them so my suggestion is the eyes for sure, eye size. I'm going to adjust eye height and eye width as well I'm going to separate just a little bit more and I'm not going to touch anything else. Maybe slide the jawline in just a touch more again and click OK when you're happy. When you're happy with your caricature, just right click, not on the thumbnail, but to the side here of your smart object and we're going to convert to smart object again. Then we're going to make two copies, so just Control J and Control J and hide the top two for now. Then we're going to name them, so double click and name this one Effect 1, name this one Effect 2, and Crazy Effect 3. Next we're going to start applying the cartoon effect. So make sure you're selected on your Effect 1 layer, go up to Filter, and go to Filter Gallery. In there you're going to find Poster Edges and just change your edge thickness to zero, edge intensity to zero, and posterization to two, and click OK. Then go back to filter, go down to sharpen, unsharpen mask, and your values are gonna be amount around 90, keep it at five for radius, and threshold around 10, and click OK. Then we're gonna go back to filter again, go down to stylize, and oil paint and adjust your settings like this. Stylization 4, cleanliness 3, scale 0 0.1, Bristol detail 0, and if you can click lightning, lightning, click lighting off or if you have sliders here and you don't have that option just slide them down to 0 and click OK. And then we're going to go to filter one more time and go to blur and down to surface blur and just put radius about 20 and threshold about 10 and again click OK. Now we're ready to apply our effects to effect layer 2 so click on it and click the eyeball to make it visible and then head up to filter and go back to filter gallery. Once again we're going to go to poster edges but this time make your edge thickness 0, edge intensity 3 and posterization 6 and click OK. Then just like we did before, we're going to go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharpen Mask, and we're going to knock these ones down to like 55 and 5 and click OK. Then go back up to Filter, 
head down to stylize and oil paint again. We can keep the exact same settings, click OK. And then on effect two, we're gonna go back to filter again and go to sharpen and unsharpen mask and you can keep the exact same settings, click OK. For this layer, however, we're gonna switch our blend mode here, so this drop down menu to overlay and we're gonna change the opacity to around 30, 35% somewhere in there. Next, click on your effect three layer and click the eyeball to make it visible. And for this layer, we only have to do one time going up to filter and go to filter gallery. And we are gonna to go to cutout and make your number of levels four, edge simplicity four and edge fidelity two. Click OK, and then head over and change your blend mode again. But this time, just pick whatever you think looks good for your image. I'm gonna pick darker color. I like the way that looks. And I'm gonna drop the opacity again to somewhere around 30, 35%. Now we're ready to put on all of our final touches, starting with our background. So if we scroll down and go right above our original mask layer that we made, let's go to right down here to adjustment layer and let's add a solid color. You can pick whatever color you want for yours. I'm gonna leave it at white for now, I guess. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna pick uh, dark purple, something like that. And then I think it looks good as well if you go to adjustment layer and you also add a gradient and change from style. I think it looks really good at radial and just change your scale to you know, a little bit higher than that to make it kind of radiate out a bit and then click OK. Once your background is set, then head back up to the top and click on your effect three layer. And on there, we're gonna add a few more adjustment layers to impact the entire image, starting with vibrance. In vibrance, just use the vibrance and saturation sliders to increase the amount of color you have and how much they pop. The next adjustment layer that we're gonna apply is called Selective Color. And my suggestion is to go where it says Colors here and just make sure you're on Neutrals to start. And then all you're gonna do is play around with these sliders until you get the look that you like. So for example, if I slide Cyan this way, you can see it creates a very different looking image than if I slide it this way. Now, you can also go up here and play with other ones here. So once you're done with Neutrals, you can narrow in on certain colors as well. So you can go to reds, let's say, and you can play around with what just the reds might look like when you slide these along. So you can really just refine this until you get a, a cool looking image that you like. And then the final way that we're gonna impact our image is to warp it. So to do that, I'm gonna close this and expand my layers again. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on effect three and then hold shift and then click on effect one and then go down here and click on this folder and that's gonna put them in a group. Then we're gonna go control J to copy the entire group, hide group one underneath and then while you're selected on group one copy or whatever you've named it, go up to layer and go to merge group. Make sure you're selected on that merged layer, then go up to filter and we're gonna go back to liquify. This time we're gonna click this, the bloat tool, and we're gonna make sure that our it's about the size of your character's face, maybe a little bit smaller, and just punch it in just a touch, just a little bit and then click OK. Now we're ready to fully warp. To warp your image, go to edit, then down to transform and select warp. Up top, you can see there's this grid here, change it to a five by five grid so we can have as many selection points and areas as possible. And really there's three different ways that we can warp within here. If you select one dot, you can see it turns blue and then you can just move that one spot, that one kind of little area to deselect anything, any dot that you select, hold shift and click on it and it'll get rid of it. You can also select in the middle of one of these areas and move the whole kind of section over, or you can actually select multiple dots by holding shift and then drawing a box around the dots that you want. And then now you can just move that little section that you select. So you can select two, you can select a whole big area, whatever you want. So I'm just going to use these techniques to kind of narrow down my the body down here at the bottom. So the first thing I'm gonna do is move kind of this in 
And then I'm going to hold Shift to deselect this top one. And I'm going to move this one dot in a little bit more. Then I'm going to hold Shift to deselect. And then Shift to select these two kind of dots. Actually, you know what? No, I'm just going to select this whole area and kind of move this kind of chunk in there. And then I'll play around with kind of these to make it look a little more natural. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Then I'm going to move this in just a little bit more. And you can see now there's these little pivots. And I can use this pivot to kind of angle it so it looks a little more natural. And I can use this pivot up here to make that part look a little more natural. I might even bring this shoulder in just a bit. I'll move this in just a touch and kind of pivot the hand in so it looks kind of nice right there. When you feel like your warp is the way that you want it, just click check. And then the very final thing that we're going to do is go back to edit, go into transform again, but this time select, whoop, this time select distort. And all we're going to do is kind of punch this one out just a bit, this one out just a bit at the top, and then at the bottom just kind of do the opposite, kind of crunch that in a bit and crunch that in a bit. And then again, just click the check and then just use your move tool to reposition your image. Actually, there is one more thing that we should do. So select on your main layer again, go up to filter and go back to that blur and surface blur and just apply the same settings we had last time. So 20 and 10 and click OK. I think it just kind of smooths it out a bit to make it look even more cartoony. If you got something out of this video or you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I will catch you next time.